Hi everyone, I'm Patty Wagner from the Big Blue Canopy, and today I'll be talking to you about developing scissor skills with your child. Now there are certain skills needed for cutting with scissors prior to actually learning scissor skills. So you, the child has to have bilateral coordination, both use of their hands, adequate hand strength, separation of two sides of the hand, eye hand coordination, opening and closing of the thumb web space and precision of grasp and release. So steps in scissor skill development begin when a child is in their toddler years. So at this age, a child enjoys just taking and tearing the paper and doing this in play activities. So you could do activities like um, having them do art projects or collages, just make it fun. And that requires the strength and endurance in the small muscles of the hand. So when a child shows an interest in and understands the use of scissors, you could begin this. So, and there's different scissors out on the market um, that you could buy both online or in stores. Um, some of my favorites is the Fiskar scissors. I like these especially because they have kind of the, um, kind of a real soft insert here and in ridges. So it's real easy for little hands to grasp in there. We also have scissors that I absolutely love when you're starting that have this um, mechanism right here. It's a spring thing. And so when the child closes, it automatically opens and they come in different brands and types and that kind of thing. Um, sometimes we get kids and they need more of a modification of their scissors and this is loop scissors and you can see here it's wider and it has these little ridges so it's real easy for kids to learn how to cut. Um, so sometimes we have to modify and use loop scissors to make them more independent and functional with their scissor skills. So now your child shows an interest and understands the use of scissors. So you want to make sure you use um, verbal cueing and visual cueing to kind of show your child how to correctly grip the scissors. So you want to make sure that thumb is up, okay? Um, and something I like to teach with kids is I will say, um, this is a bus driver and the bus driver sits in the front of the bus and these are the students. So they sit behind the bus driver. So the bus driver goes in front here in this smaller loop and the students go behind there so and then always thumb up so that's kind of a fun way if you want to teach a child okay so the child learns how to hold the scissors appropriately without assistance as they start to refine and advance in their scissor skills and at about two and two and a half years of age this is when a child begins to open and close with the scissors now I've had plenty of kids that have come to me and they're older than that. And that's understandable given that sometimes you really don't want to give a two and two and a half year old a pair of scissors for safety reasons. So, um, but that's the age where they can begin to really get that ability to do that. Um, so then the child learns how to open and close using more of a controlled act action. And then, more like two and a half, three years of age, the child will be able to hold the paper and make random cuts. Now, when a child first learns how to cut, <coughs> excuse me, usually what they'll do is they'll make um, rough cuts. And so you're gonna have these rough um, cuts in the paper. They're also gonna have a lot of lateral movement. So. Um, they can first be able to kind of cut across a piece of paper, and as they refine and advance those skills, they'll learn how to cut on a line, okay? So as the child advances and refines those skills, then you won't see so much of those awkward cuts, that un unintentional lateral movements, and ripping up the paper, okay? And they can also do that with more better isolated control rather than that whole body moving forward. So here at the bottom, there's just examples, and there's a lot of things that you could pull up either online or um, they have tons of preschool books that have really fun activities that you could practice scissor skill development with your child. So as the kid starts to 
um, refine and advance with those skills, they'll start cutting out simple shapes involving one direction change. So here's an example of one direction change. So the child is cutting along here and does that one direction change. Um, when I first work with kids and we're working on that, I will scaffold that so I'll have really thick lines. And as they get better at that, then I will make those lines smaller. Um, here we go. Smaller, like that. Okay. Um, and then as they start to advance again, they'll be able to cut out more simple shapes involving more than one direction change. And they'll get better at curved and angle lines. And you can see here, it starts out straight and then it gets harder into those um, angled lines like I showed you before there, okay? And then they can do things like cutting out circles. And I have an activity here. It's just like where the child has to cut out the eggs and they color it and they cut it out and then they sort it and they put it in the correct nest. So it, you can work on not only scissor skills, but also work on um, sorting and color identification, things like that. So what are some fun activities to work on for developing scissor skills? Well, of course, there's, as we talked about before, the books online and the printable things that you can get. Um, Play-Doh is always great fun. Um, name art, like toddlers can cut out tiny, or excuse me, can cut out tiny pieces of paper and glue them on their name. So there you're working on no, you're working on scissor skills, but you're also working on um, identifying their name and also letter identification. Um, tons of arts and crafts projects where you're making lanterns or cutting out straws for a project or making a card or cutting out a snowflake. Um, magazine hunt, so you tell the kid, okay, I want you to go through this and find all the things that are circles. And so they can identifying that, cutting them out, sorting them, um, nature cutting tray. You can have your kid go on a scavenger hunt and they can find different textures and you get a lot of that you know, they could describe the feel of those textures and the shape of those textures, and then they can cut along that to see how that feels. Um, you can use, you know, any kind of paper. Sometimes I will take construction paper and I'll fold that in half just so it's thicker, so it gives them a lot more of that tactile probe input when they're cutting with scissors. Or you can, if you're throwing out old mail, they can take that and they could cut that up for an art project. I've also had some parents where they've done cutting coupons. So another thing that I've done is um, Mary Benbow, which is a very experienced therapist taught me this where she calls it like these little nail heads and she's just real simple, drawn that on paper. And then it teaches the kid where they cut here and then they have to stop right at the top of that nail head. So it teaches them kind of that stopping point. So you would have that, like, let's say the kid's learning how to cut out a square. So they have to cut, 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 stop, okay? And then, so they don't round their corners, but they have nice sharp edges of that square. They stop, then, then they turn and reorient the paper, and then they get back on that line. So that would be a good precursor in working on that. Um, but the most important thing is to have fun with it. And I just found this cute picture of this little girl that um, I guess she got a hold of a pair of scissors and she cut her own hair. So uh, be careful for that. So, but um, supervision with the adults, have fun. And thank you so much for tuning in and please stay safe. Bye-bye.